Okay, we're in the garage. This is a floating slab, okay, which means that it moves independently from the foundation perimeter. It can come up and down, and apparently it's been, <coughs> excuse me, it has been coming up and down. We've got some pretty good cracks in the slab. This is the lawn sprinkler control. All right, there's some directions, but we don't see a care and use manual. Stations are not labeled. Do not see a weather sensor. Another interesting thing about this, is this electric power coming to it as a conduit? Okay, we got a junction, it's not in a junction box. This equipment's not 17 inches off of the garage floor. The clothes dryer vents directly into the garage improperly. We gotta have a conventional safety tray hookup, laundry hookup there, and the hot and cold are not labeled differently. They're two red handles. This is not GFCI protected either. The garage is not GFCI protected. Door opener, courtesy light does work. You do have an emergency pull handle, okay? We do have pull handles inside. The manual door lock should not have been, uh, should have been disabled. <clears throat> the optic sensors should not have been higher from the floor than six inches. And the gasket on the bottom of this thing is torn and compromised. It's an older door, older wooden door. It's a, uh, seen better days is wear and tear this is the electric service pa um there's the gas meter inside the fence all right this is electric service panel cables touching the panel cover l1 and l2 they should have rubber booties on them 200 amps they've been replaced we've got a permit but we do not have a green tag okay the permit was pulled but it was never finalized Wire stitching panel cover, white hots, gap between the panel, cabinet, and the wall more than a quarter inch. <coughs> Bundling. Okay. See how all these come in individually like that? That's real nice. Okay. And then these, okay, they come through a larger hole, like that one, a larger knockout. But they took that one out and they brought all these in. What else have we got going on here? No double lugging. Bonding location is not labeled. We've got a single ground. By current standards, when this was installed, double ground should have been done. And then these screws, these sheetrock screws, they're fast and tight. I get that. But they break. Okay? If a tornado comes through, you know, you want nails holding this. Nails should have been holding that. This was the original panel. It's now a junction box. Junction box. Okay, wires touching panel cover, like the other one. And then we've got an open knockout up here without a connector. And we've got raw wire coming in through there. Okay. This door, okay, it's not fire rated. This is not fire rated glass, so it's not fire rated. So if there's a fire in the garage, it'll just blow that door out. I'm going to back up a little bit. This opener should have its own receptacle. It's bootlegged off of the light receptacle, which is not GFCI protected. And now you have to use a pull chain to work that light. You can't use a switch. If you use a switch, then it'll turn off the door and the light. This door swings closed on its own accord. We're moving on along. This is the kitchen. Okay, this is the west wall in the kitchen. And they installed all this tile like this. They brought the wall out. So the junction box is way back in there. So you should have an extender. Some people call them goof rings. An extender should have been installed so that you don't compromise the fire blocking between that receptacle. And while we're at it, no GFCI. Okay. In fact, I don't think there is any GFCI in the kitchen. <coughs> this is the kitchen sink. This is called a foul line, F-O-U-L. Okay. It's supposed to cascade down like this. I'm not supposed to have that. That's where all the bacteria collects. I don't have a drain stopper for the garbage disposal yet. And we're going along. You know, let me get a light on the subject. There you are. I don't know what size this is. It's plenty of food waste disposal. But the dishwasher drain line does not come up and meet the kitchen sink. 
So we don't really have a good anti-siphon device going for this. Alright, that's the dishwasher. I haven't run that yet. This is the gas cooktop. Okay. It would have been nice if that gas line coming through here. That gas line would have had an discussion plate on it, but it doesn't. Alright, one thing that it doesn't have that's not required, so we're just going to keep with that going, is uh, it doesn't have a kitchen vent fan. There's no code that requires that. Don't worry, I'm not going to lose you. Okay. The ovens, the top one has convection, self-cleaning, and both of them, electric oven. Moving on along in here, we're in the den. Okay, wine chillers are beyond the scope of this inspection. Refrigerators are beyond the scope of this inspection. This is a thermostat, it's programmable. This thermostat is on the south wall. Okay, so the radiant heat from the sun can inflect, can affect the thermostat. I'm not supposed to install them in those locations. That same location also is on the same wall as the fireplace. No, it's not. Never mind. Fireplace, the hearth extension is less than 12 inches. You get 24 inches. The mantle is closer than 12 inches. It has a screen. I got a very small leak. I think you want to see a leak uh, gas video about that. Uh, it looks like there's a very small leak at that um, gas valve right there. And uh, of course, the key is key is here. Moving on along. In the hall, that's the door. Oh, you can see it better in the other room. I'll back up here. I'll come through here. When you see these deflections on the floor like that, a cupping, means we've had water issues. If on top or below, ventilation, moisture. Um, I was getting between eight and ten percent. I'm not sure. Well, I'll tell you. Hang on, we can talk about it. Over time. I've got it on my recorder. But anyway, the moisture, there's not that much moisture in the floors. Acceptable levels, if you will. Okay, this is the front bedroom. This is going to be um, first bedroom, west bedroom, uh, but you shouldn't have pull strings and bare light bulbs in closed closets. It was, I mean, 1954, sure, okay. Moving on along in here, kind of the same story, 1954, we don't have any grounding. Even if you had GFCI, you're supposed to have GFCI and grounding, not one or the other. And I don't think you have GFCI. Moving along, all pink towel. you got a bathtub that has a shower, then you should have a single mix valve. You shouldn't have double valves like that. Okay, uh, but double, yeah, but double valves to prevent accidental scalding. Okay, we got a storm window out here. This interior window has definitely seen some better days. Okay, because you do have a window, if it works, then a uh, vent fan's not required. No heater or vent. Oh, you do have a vent fan though. Okay, you do not have a vent fan hood on the roof. So it's a heater and a vent fan. We'll check the heater in a little bit. No vent fan and fan on the roof. This is the cross space access. That's my outfit. And I'm going to don. Okay. Master closet door is missing. Shower's been opened up. It's handy capable. Got a dog cage in here. I'm not going to be able to run this shower. Basically, check the shower, um, shower pan. I'm just come caution you. It does have a single handle, okay? But uh, there's not a lot we're going to be able to do with that. We're, we're kind of hamstrung there. Moving on along, this is the second bedroom, middle bedroom, east bedroom, and it all looks pretty much the same as the others. When you see soot like this, you see soot like that around a register that had to come through the filter, that had to come through your coils. Okay, that's an indication that you got dirty coils. And that's the interior tour.